Oh. oh. Hello. Perfect. So you were able to join? Yes, I, I'm, I was able to join. Okay, perfect. Um, so probably I should wait a, a little a, a while just before entering because I was trying to, to, to enter immediately. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, just so you know, we went live so that we can allow the participants to join. Um, okay. So, uh, Javier, can you hear us as well? Um, check with Javier's. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hi, Javier. Can you hear us? Um, he might have muted in a second. So, Javier, can you hear us at all? Um, perhaps I'll message him just to make sure. Um, Uh, Gurav, is everything working fine at your end? Yeah, my end it's absolutely fine. Okay, perfect. I'll just check with how. Hi, Javier. Can you hear us now? I think we might be on a call. And just let him know. All right, well, in the meantime, I'll just start off um, so that once we all get hold of Javier, I'm sure, uh, I think she might he might be joining us soon. Um, so uh, then I'll just start off introducing the Kama first. And, and then in the meantime, I'll ask uh, some help from our organizing team to sort this out. Um, so, to introduce Takama to everyone, uh, we are an IP intellectual, um, um, IP uh, tech tool. Uh, we are working with IP owners and uh, law firms to help them budget their upcoming IP portfolio. We also do docketing for them and uh, also allow um, law firms and uh, IP owners to find foreign associates. Um, we are based in London. Um, we just thought that we would organize this webinar for everyone uh, who's interested in IP and wants to learn about digitization. Um, since we are not allowed to um, go to events anymore and everyone's stuck at home, uh, we just thought it would be a good way to, to keep the conversation going. Um, so I'll, I'll hand it over to our speakers in the meantime. So. I'll ask Gurav if you could introduce yourself first. Gurav, can you hear us? Am I audible now? Yes, yeah, perfect. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Gaurav Sehel and I am from Mumbai, India. And I currently head the patent filing and prosecution team of Sun Pharmaceutical Industries Limited and the other group companies for Sun Pharma. Sun Pharma is largest Indian uh, pharmaceutical company and fifth largest generic pharma company in the world. Thank you. Um, so now we are going over to Javier. Hopefully he hears us.
Javier, if you just turn your audio on on the top. Yes, fantastic. Okay. Yeah, can you hear me now? Okay, very good. So yeah, my name is Javier Bilbao. Uh, I'm Spanish, though living in Switzerland and working for Melexis, which is a semiconductor company. I am the IP strategy manager, uh, which is a global function for the company in order to um, lay down the IP strategy and the money with the business unit. Uh, I also lead the IP team internally. Um, and uh, Melexis is a semiconductor company, a uh, worldwide leader in precision sensors, uh, mostly for the automotive industry, but we also have uh, other industries that we serve. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and Miglena as well, please. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Miglena Dimitrova. I'm a Bulgarian qualified warrior. Uh, I'm a founding partner at MDMI Legal. Um, we are fully scoped for a war firm focusing on IP law, but also dealing a lot with m &A transactions, general corporate advice, commercial contracts, as well as uh, gaming and gambling regulatory advice. Thank you. Um, so just one thing, um, I will be asking questions from all of our speakers, but if anyone in the audience would like to ask anything, I'll be uh, making notes so just let us know and uh, I'll ask those questions at the end um, so let's start off can you just tell us about your experience when it comes to digitization in your uh, IP department and your law firm as well uh, let's start off with uh, Javier perhaps yes okay yeah I see that I'm muted very good so I think that for us, um, we went through a process of a full digitalization of the IP department. Uh, we have digitalized it in different ways. So the first one was actually we have uh, implemented uh, portfolio management tools in the IP department. We are a semiconductor company that is worldwide distributed and uh, we have a relatively large uh, patent portfolio and obviously that was critical for us in order to have a good overview and also to manage not only the patents from a passive point of view for the products but also strategically uh, something that i think is more and more critical the more we move into partnerships um, and actually after that first digitalization uh, we have moved forward into uh, further digitalization which is more towards idea flows and invention disclosure and ideation so we have uh, two platforms in order to do that which actually turned out to be a great uh, especially in these current times we actually have seen an increase of uh, invention disclosure during uh, during this time um, and um, finally, the last digital tool that we have implemented in our company was uh, a pattern intelligent tool in order to really exploit all the fragmented knowledge that we have in our company. So really to assess uh, our own patterns and also uh, third party patterns that we are interested in and have it uh, really a company intelligence uh, single point of information. Thank you. Uh, and Gura? as well please yeah sure so as as i mentioned that uh, sun pharma is currently the fifth largest pharmaceutical generic pharmaceutical company in world and uh, sun pharma is growing at a very high pace in the past 10 years if i say the size of the company has almost doubled and uh, currently the patent portfolio which i handle for all Sun group of companies is more than 10,000 patents globally. So for such kind of a large patent portfolio, uh, without digitization, it, it is definitely not possible. And this requirement particularly was more important when we acquired a company of almost the same size of Sun Pharma five years back. So where our patent portfolio size was almost doubled. So the first challenge was to uh, manage the patent portfolio by a docketing system and also the invention disclosure forms. So we, we definitely have completely digitized the patent portfolio by using docketing systems. And the second part is being a generic pharmaceutical company, we have a lot of active ANDA litigations in US and other countries. So for the discovery requirements also, we have completely digitized our IP, IP litigation department. So this this is something which is the uh, demand for today's uh, 
uh, be it a pharma or any other company or a law firm, the decision is must. Uh, thank you. Uh, and Miguel as well, I think you also have a recent experience of digitization. Um, so yes. Um, uh, since we're dealing with very complex cases and very large amount of information and sensitive information, uh, um, I will speak uh, on, on for our IP department, but also for other uh, for our m a department litigation departments and all the commercial department that are dealing with the contracts and um currently we are in the process of adopting of some uh, digital approaches and tools in order to uh, to be more um to be, to be more effective to be more time consuming to, to to save time and costs and to be more competitive uh on the market we are thinking that uh, it's 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 for uh, for us. We are in the very in the very early stage of the implementing of this platform, but it will uh, we think that it will be um, very competitive for us, and so we will also have the possibility to reach new clients and to um, to spend less time on um, on dealing on some more time consuming operations like legal searches. Um, reviewing of DDR documents and etc. Thank you. Uh, I'll also, I think I'm interested in knowing, and I think everyone else is uh, what the audience thinks. So I'll just uh, start the poll uh, now. And if you could answer, the question is Do you think your IP department law firm is innovative enough? I'll just wait for the answers. Um, hopefully it works. I'll leave it for a couple of minutes. And then in the meantime, we can uh, move on to the next question. Uh, and what were the challenges uh, that prompted you to use technology uh, in, within your um, department or law firm? Um, Gura, would you like to answer that first? Yeah, sure, Victoria. So I, I would, although there are multiple challenges uh, which a company or a law firm faces when handling such a large portfolio, but the, there were two triggers which actually uh, I can say are the key elements for uh, complete digitization of the IP department. One was the uh, size of the company suddenly increased to almost uh, a size of double of its existing whereas the number of resources were not doubled in that proportion. So that, that was a time when it was certainly required that to manage the deadlines, to manage uh, the large portfolio, we must have you know, a complete docketing system which can take care of the uh, all kind of legal and formal requirements as well as the uh, docketing systems. So this was one. And second was uh, as soon as the portfolio size increased, the number of invoices that we were receiving from all the law firms that suddenly got uh, we, we were seeking we were seeing a lot of inflow of invoices every now and then and my uh, team members were just busy in reviewing those invoices so that was the time when i introduced complete digitization of my invoice handling system and at present we are using thomson reuters legal tracker system which is fully integrated with our SAP system for things. So all manual systems have been removed and not only the efficiency is increased, but also the speed. So these, these were the two basic challenges which uh, helped us in thinking in that direction that yes, digitization is something which must be done so that the resources can be optimally utilized for other things. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Uh, Miglena, would you like to answer? Yes, the uh, the issue uh, actually that we were discussing internally a year ago uh, was whether to hire new attorneys that can assist us with the increasing volume of legal work, legal searches and translations, reviews of documents, the legal the, the part of the legal work that is more time consuming, or to invest uh, in the digitalization tool or technology, and we. We decided to to proceed uh, 
um, and to try with some new uh, decisions uh, and digital tools that will uh, help us to be more more effective. Um, as Warav said, we were also experiencing a lot of uh, uh, difficulties with our with our system for for billable hours, which is really uh, a lot of time consuming for all the attorneys that are working on billable hours. And we decided to to integrate a more a system for flat fees, where whether and when it is possible, in order to to, to save time and uh, yes, and to integrate more effective uh, system for for reflecting the viewable hours and invoicing process. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and Javier as well. Yes, thank you. I think we, we came across very similar challenges that Gaurav did uh, in his company. So we also have a very grow. Uh, we had a very big growth in the past year. So double digit growth for more than seven years in a row. And therefore, I think there we face pretty much the challenge of doing more with the same, um, which uh, clearly uh, push you towards digitalization and uh, efficiency uh, solutions. Um, one thing that it was also a critical point for you is the speed of change. So currently we are, I mean, we are in the semiconductor industry and the speed of change is, is very fast. We need therefore to adapt much quicker our portfolio over with, the, with the new business situation and how the market evolves. And therefore, uh, for us, something that was really critical for us is then to be able to align the ever-changing strategy with the portfolio, which was something that we didn't face before uh, because things were more stable simply. And nowadays, um, very little patents survive the 20 years uh, of exploitation in, in our case uh, and in our industry. So those are the two challenges I think that, that we face and that are quite industry specific. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, it's interesting to see that um, uh, the IP sector is one of the slowest sometimes to, to uh, implement innovation. Um, so uh, actually for the poll, uh, we have the answers are, most of them are 66% says that they are on the right track, but not there yet. So they think that their law firm and IP department is innovative enough. The poll can be seen on the uh, uh, right hand side. Um, if you want to uh, check out what were the answers. Uh, and then let's move on in the meantime to our next question. If you can just tell us about what, what are the challenges that you're facing at the moment. Um, let's start with Javier. Well, mm, one of the biggest challenges I think that we are currently facing is more data consistency. So currently, even though we have several tools and uh, unfortunately we couldn't find the one fits all, um, data consistency is one of the biggest problems we are facing. Uh, still, it requires quite a lot of manual work uh, to get in. Uh, it requires also to train uh, the firms and the law firms uh, in order to put the data in the, the tools or otherwise have internal people. And that's one of the biggest uh, challenges that we are currently facing in order to, to move forward with this digitalization, uh, how much we can trust basically uh, the data that we are getting out from the system. And um, the other challenge, I would say, it's more about cultural change and about actually how not only we have new tools uh, within, the IP, uh, within the IP group that I think we more quickly adopted. But I think one of the biggest leverages those IP tools have is about to embrace the whole organization and that everybody contributes to the knowledge uh, on IP. And so I think, well, contribute to the knowledge and get the knowledge from IP. So therefore, I think what is very interesting is that how to get the organization on board and how to get the people contributing. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and Miglena? Um, I personally uh, think that uh, modernization might be easier for the legal sector if it expands on existing services rather than uh, replacing demand for traditional war services. And I'm also of the view that um, at this stage, the wholly virtual war firm 
will face some uh, big challenges. However, there are many opportunities for law firms to, uh, to use the technologies that they are currently available. Um, and uh, we are currently in process of introducing a new technology platform that will allow lawyers and clients to work um, at the same time remotely on documents via central technology platform. Um, and we think that is um, that will save time for the um, for the warriors uh, and uh, in terms of exchanging emails and sending there so many different versions and corrections at the same time that will make the clients happy that they will be in a position to see in real time what are the changes made in their documents and they will have a uh, possibility to have all their documents at, and at one and the same place. So we are really exciting how this, uh, this, this um, technology platform will work for us and for our clients. Thank you. Uh, and Gurav as well, please. Yeah. So uh, as have you very rightly uh, captured the uh, essence of what I want to say, but I will just use one very simple example to explain the challenge that I face. Uh, whenever we buy a new mobile phone, be it an Android or an iPhone, we ha now have very good tools to simply transfer your data from one phone to another phone. You can completely transfer your data from the one phone to another phone, be it an Android to iPhone or iPhone to iPhone or Android to Android. But that kind of flexibility I do not see at present in the uh, uh, docketing systems which we use or other tools and this particular problem arises when we acquire some company or when we license a large patent portfolio from some other company and then that becomes a tedious task of manually putting all the details into the database so that that is one big challenge which we face currently and whenever we put uh, the details manually there are chances of errors and there is no way uh, we can trace those errors if it is made once. So recently I'm facing a challenge of uh, adding the details of one portfolio of about 350 patent families globally for a company in which we recently acquired. So now that's a manual task which will take me months and if there is any error, it becomes difficult. And the simple reason is that the company which we acquired was using a different docketing system. So there is no way we can integrate these two systems. That is one challenge which we are facing. And the companies which are working on this uh, direction, uh, creating docketing systems and creating such tools should definitely think about those options. Yes, thank you. Uh, and Javier, you, were, uh, you touched upon this uh, about the company culture. Why do you think the IP sector or in, in general, some companies are less likely to be innovative? Is it do you think because of the culture or or it's just how the legal system is? Um, uh, let's start with Javier with you then. Yes, well, I think it's it's quite an interesting uh, question because I really believe or what the word I, I see there is like a two speed uh, IP sector. So there is one which is very much technology driven and they are really pushing for, for technology because from a technological point of view, it's it's a system that enables a lot of automatization um, because it's very structured, uh, is very well defined, rules are clear, and um, so in that respect, I think it is um, very much prone to digitalization. At the same time, is a sector that is extremely fragmented. So even within a company, there are so many service providers, uh, so many um, different stakeholders within the company, uh, which I think is what is limiting currently uh, the, the the adoption of, of digitalization tools. So um, I think that it's more a consolidation problem that we are facing in the industry. Um, and I think that will slowly come. So currently we are really exploding the amount of solutions. And I think there will be a phase of consolidation that will really speed up uh, the, the digitalization of, of the industry itself. Yes, thanks. Uh, and Miglena as well, please. Um, yes, it's really very interesting questions. And uh, in my view, the legal industry isn't uh, known as it's for its innovative workspaces and modern technologies. 
Uh, many people think that the legal industry is rather conservative and slowly changing. And in my view, they, there are reasons for this. Uh, the big law firms are still resisting the, the, the digitizing of sensitive information. And the reason for this, uh, for, in my view, from one side, is um, that some clients may fear that their documents about uh, intended uh, highly confidential transactions are existing in the cloud. And from the other side, uh, probably the, the legal sector itself is still re reluctant uh, to proceed with the full digitalization. Another issue is also uh, that the lawyers, uh, including uh, our law firm, um, is co considering is the um, is the is the trust is the client is the trust of the clients. This includes also the trust in fully automated uh, digital legal services in general. Uh, however, uh, we're living in an era that fast technology developments and the financial industry, for example, has had a big success with the online banking. So it seems unusual that the clients uh, uh, are not willing to virtually sign a document. And uh, they are still, uh, it's understandable why, why any sector that has dealing with sensitive information may be reluctant to digitalize. However, we're living in an era that there are many ways to secure the online data. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and Gurav as well? Yeah, so I think uh, the cultural issue is uh, not specific to IP. This is across the sector, across the industry. And uh, while younger generation is relatively more, uh, uh, is accepting it more easily, I find this challenge more with slightly uh, older generation. That is a, an inherent resistance to a change. That is one reason I see. And second reason what I see is, uh, for example, there was a junior level paralegal person who was doing all the docketing work manually. Now, if this kind of system is implemented, there is an inherent risk which a person feels to his or her job. That that also becomes a kind of, a, uh, that, that comes out as a resistance in adopting these changes. This problem, particularly, I can see in countries like India and China, where the population is large and we need, we need more number of jobs. And there is an inherent resistance that if technology comes, probably the number of jobs will go down. So that, that is another resistance which we face. And we need to address those issues properly, because those are also definitely important issues. Uh, and if I may add something to graph, because I, I, I was also thinking about this. This, uh, except for um, uh, the case of the empowerment, it may also lead, some people think that it may also lead to uh, unprofessionalism to younger, to younger colleagues and younger attorneys and paralegals that will not have the chance to, to work uh, slowly on every and, uh, and every document, so to, to improve their, um, uh, their qualification when they use uh, it will be more easy to when they use uh, a technology. Uh, so it's also an issue that I was thinking about. Yeah, I totally agree on that. All right, thank you. Um, so moving on, uh, I will ask another poll question uh, from the audience. Just uh, what do you think would require automation when it comes to managing IP? Uh, and I'll started just now so that you can see the possible answers. Um, and then on similar note, uh, I will ask you as well, is there anything that you think is missing from the IP sector uh, in terms of technology or is there anything that you haven't been able to find um, uh, to implement uh, in your uh, department? So let's start with Gurav. <laughs> Yeah, so the one, one point I already captured was, uh, which I, I seriously feel is missing, a, is a connecting link between the different kind of digital digitization and automation tools that we face. And that is one area which uh, really needs some kind of uh, uh, 
uh, improvements because as and when any company is sold off or acquired or in licensed that that becomes a challenge so uh, that is one major challenge which i feel is uh, clearly a gap at present thank you uh, and javier yeah, well, from my side, I think one of the parts from IP that hasn't been really considered yet to, to for the digitalization is pretty much the drafting phase. I think there there is a huge potential uh, that is yet to be untapped in terms of reuse um, of the information. So companies, public, uh, but, um, yeah, sorry, I had another sound in between. Uh, so companies do get a lot of information out thanks to their patents and there is a lot of the text that can be reused from patent application to patent application because normally companies are within a technology or a technology area and i think that will be extremely useful in order to reduce the the amount of hours spent for drafting and not only that but also to increase the quality of the draftings um, and i wish that uh, there were tools in order to to enhance a bit these patent attorney skills yeah, thank you. And Miglena? Um, I was thinking, actually, it's very interesting. I was thinking of two, um, two, two things that, that probably um, are currently, uh, at least to my understanding and to my view, not that developed. Uh, the one of this is the uh, existence of a trustworthy legal searches for litigation and IP cases that can make a reliable summary of the conclusions of the courts on the merits that I think it's uh, it will be very helpful and very useful uh, because you can make searches on the on the on the relevant cases but uh, if you can go through all the all the legal all the legal mm, uh, mm, decisions and all the cases that are extremely long it, it's a lot of time consuming and that's I think it will be very very useful to have this and the other thing is with regard to that, that I was um, thinking even two or three year, years ago, it's um, with regard to the uh, IP law, um, there is still no technology for identifying digital content or visualization and pictures that have been already protected by law or somehow like a, like a trademark. Because in the digital world, if, if you, if you, there, if there are any small changes in the in the content of the wording, for example, or in the visualization, in the picture, if you change a color or a resolution, then uh, this will make uh, um, difficult uh, for the digitalization tool to, to identify the changes and to identify that already a currently existing uh, object that is uh, subject to patents and protection. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so in the meantime, uh, we have received questions from the audience. So I'm just going to read out those as well. Uh, what do you think about using uh, DLT, distributed ledger technology in IP management? Uh, would, is there anyone who would like to answer that particular question? So it's basically blockchain. Uh, I don't know. If, I think, Miglena, you touched upon uh sharing a document with the client uh and then working on it together yes i think it's uh it's a uh, we, we are still in process of we have haven't tried it yet but i think it's it will be really straightforward process um that will allow the attorneys and the clients to work together on the document and it will speed up the process of negotiation um so it's still very new for us so we, we will see how it works in the future so that i can say a, a little bit later for, for for our experience on this um on this technology platform yeah, thank you uh anyone else javier or uh Gurav, if you would like to answer let me know yeah, from from my side, I mean, we ha we haven't had any exposure yet to to blockchain or distributed technologies. I think blockchain and distributed technologies are great as soon as there is not a trust entity that can certify where the documents come from. Or so so far for IP, 
I, I don't really see uh, an added value since I think everybody trusts the USPTO and the European Patent Office and any other country offices. Nevertheless, I think what what it could be extremely useful is more for patent pools and uh, licensing agreements where actually more smart contracts and distributed technologies can play a big role uh, in, in order to have automatic payments and more transparency uh, in that dimension. Um, but maybe something that, as I said, I, I didn't have yet that much exposure to it. Thank you. Uh, Gaurav, would you like to add anything? Uh, no, Victoria, so not on this point. I don't have much uh, exposure on this at present. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Um, so we do have another question uh, question from Niall Tierney, and which is, what impact do the speakers believe 5G will have on the digitization of IP portfolios? Um, is there anyone who would like to go first or <laughs> perhaps? I think Javier should be the right person to answer. <laughs> uh, it's a tough question. It's a, it's a very tough question. Um, I'm definitely not an expert uh, with respect to, to, to 5G and all what it will enable, a part that certainly will enable IoT. And um, to be honest, we have we have think about it strongly about what will be the impact towards the industry. Um, and when I say the industry, it's more the semiconductor industry uh, rather than the I IP industry. Um, I don't think the technology itself will have an impact on IP. Nevertheless, I think the fact that it's such a massive technology and deployment, uh, again, I think it will have more uh, an impact on how companies operate uh, from, from a patent pool situation. And I think there is a lot of uh, competition between companies on who will be the leading IP owner of the 5G technology. So at that level, I think certainly it will have an impact. But I'm not sure if for the IP industry and digitalization of IP itself. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else who would like to add anything? Or uh, I do have some a couple of more questions. So one is um, from Mario Romero Pintor. Uh, based on your experience in your comp uh, in your company's IP firms and in your opinion, who do you think must be the responsible for the digitalization in the company IP IT department only? A group of stakeholders from each department. Uh, Victoria, I can answer this. Yes, Got sure. Up. So th th there is a clear answer. Yes, this has to be a cross-functional team. And because I have recently done it, I know you need uh, multiple stakeholders because one function doesn't know the function of other uh, department. So you need to have uh, functions from IT. You need to have functions from intellectual property. And if you have multiple uh, segments in IP, for example, litigation or prosecution or paralegal, you need to have a person who can take care of those sectors. And you definitely need somebody from the legal uh, team as well as an accounts or finance team if it comes to invoice management or something and taxation department and possibly the uh, representation from the company for, from which we are using a digitization tool. So it has to be a cross-functional team definitely. Yeah, thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to add anything? Okay, perfect. Um, so one more thing, I just wanted to tell you the results of the poll. So what do you think would require automation when it comes to managing IP? 15% uh, said budgeting, 53% uh, said man managing deadlines and reminders, 23% uh, said reporting, and 7% said document review. And surprisingly, <laughs> no one said nothing at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, I think if we have no more questions from the audience, then I think that that is the conclusion of our webinar. Um, I want to thank all the speakers for joining today. Uh, it was a very interesting conversation. Um, I would like to also co uh, thank Cosmonauts for organizing the webinar and helping us. 
And oh, there's one more question actually. Um, so perhaps I'll quickly ask, which management tool for digitalization would you recommend? Uh, that's from Borja. <laughs> um, I really think it depends what do you want to digitalize. Uh, as I said, unfortunately, we couldn't find a tool that fits all. Um, I think it depends what is your priorities. Uh, every tool has their um, trade-offs to be made. And I think it really depends on really what you want to digitalize and also what is your current resources. Um, actually, if, I mean, I will be happy to discuss more in detail uh, that but i mean they feel free to contact us after the webinar if you if you have any particular question uh, more concrete yeah. yeah perfect thank you uh anyone else javier or uh, uh gurav or miglena uh, so so to, yeah, in, in general what i can say is uh, I, I can at present uh, recommend only those tools which I have used because definitely there are many tools and I have not explored all of them. But what I would like to really see uh, coming up as a new tool is something uh, which talks about integration of such tools so that the efficiencies can be increased. I'm, I'm really looking forward to something which, which is available to integrate all such tools because that part is something which is really missing in practical terms when I use those tools now. But yes, I am available for any specific questions over email or phone call or chat. Uh, yes, of course, thank you very much. Um, one thing I wanted to mention that all of our attendees and speakers as well, if you are interested in trialing Pakama as well, uh, we are happy to offer a month uh, free trial for everyone here so just let me know as well uh in an email um and thank you very much again for joining um hopefully we'll have a couple more webinars in the coming weeks two more webinars in the coming weeks um and we'll let you know about when when they will be and the subject as well so thank you thank you very much victoria Thanks. for inviting us it was a pleasure thank you everyone stay thank safe you. Yeah. Thank you. you Stay safe. Bye. 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 Have a lovely day.